Hello all, thank you for tuning to our presentation on Stargazer, an interactive camera robot for capturing how-to videos based on subtle instructor cues. People often watch how-to videos to learn useful physical skills for workplace and for home. However, making a good how-to video for teaching these skills is not straightforward. To show why, let me first play a well-made tutorial video. Then prepare your leaks. Just take your knife and go down through the center, turn it over, and again into quarters. So you've got all that opening up. And then you may notice how this video clip used various combinations of camera positions and angles to clearly show both the details and the overall action of the chef. However, this high quality does not come for free. It is based on complex equipment and a whole team of camera operators. In this picture, you see three cameras and two camera operators who can dynamically adjust the cameras to follow what is going on in the kitchen from different angles and zoom levels. This kind of resources is not available to most physical skill tutorial video creators. In contrast, they often have to go through effortful camera setup processes. Let me play a clip to show how much setup this instructor needs to do just to film a very brief action. So the goal of the Stargazer project is to help physical skill instructors make high quality informative tutorial videos without a dedicated camera crew. We use the highly articulated robotic arm that can automatically track and capture regions of interest, such as the instructor's hands. This is the footage recorded by the robot. Recognizing that the instructor knows what is the relevant visual content to be presented to the learners, we want the instructors to be able to control what the robot tracks while explaining and demonstrating the skills. However, we do not want them to perform any kind of input action that is only for controlling the robot, but do not add to the content of the tutorial, as this will take away the instructor's time and cognitive resources for teaching. Our key idea here is to watch for subtle cues from the instructors. What makes these cues interesting is that they can be seen as part of the tutorial content itself. Let me show you two concrete examples from the tutorial videos our participants created. We use the medium-sized wrench shown here. Uh, you can look closer, it is hexagon, hexagon shape, which is the same. You can see how he was able to naturally use speech to have the camera zoom in onto the tool in his hand. In the second example, pay attention to how the camera transitioned from looking at the material on the table to her hands. And the orange one, I'm going to use it for a mouth for a dog. And these are for the eyes. Okay. Let's start from... So how did we achieve these interactions? We started with understanding what kind of behaviors instructors may want from a camera robot and what aspects of these behaviors they may want to control. We studied 50 physical skill tutorial videos shot by shot, focusing on the subjects, that is, what is captured by the camera, the camera angle, whether the camera is looking straight at the subject or from a higher or lower position, and zoom level, that is, how much area the subject takes up on the camera frame. Our analysis revealed some common patterns. Physical skill tutorial videos tend to focus on a small set of subjects, first, the hands of the instructor manipulating objects. These shots communicate most of the actions to complete the physical task. Another popular kind of shots show the instructor themselves talking to the camera. In the middle, you can see these two examples. These shots try to simulate a face-to-face -face conversation. Finally, the, uh, the other common type of subjects highlight objects and sometimes particular details on objects. We also find that they use two common camera angles, include the standard angle, meaning that the camera is approximately level with the subject, and high angles, that is, looking from a higher position at a subject. Finally, we noted that the instructor used at least two zoom levels to show overviews and details respectively. Now we move to the cues that can be used to trigger changes in camera parameters. 
Implicit cues include head and hand positions, which naturally come from the need to capture the instructor's hands and their faces in the videos. We also included torso orientation to increase the visibility of the instructor's actions. We further looked at cues that instructors commonly use to direct the attention of their students to various aspects of a tutorial. Gestures are a very common kind of communication signals for this purpose. Following these conventions, we use gestural cues to signal to the robot to change subjects. For example, a pointing gesture will prompt the robot to focus on the object being pointed at. People also commonly use language instruction to direct others' attention. In this picture, the pottery instructor can verbally suggest the boy to pay attention to how she shapes the top of the piece. Following these behaviors, we listen to instructor's speech and look for sentences that explicitly suggest changing camera zoom levels or angles to set the robot's camera parameters. Our camera robot supports three types of shots as informed by the video survey. The first is the instructor shot showing the instructor talking to the camera, then the action shot showing the actions to complete a task, and object shots to highlight an object. Let me walk you through an example to show how the robot changes its behavior based on instructor input. Here, our instructor is giving a tutorial on how to make a 3D printed lamp. Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a 3D printed lamp. Take a look at this top color. Most of the time, the robot tracks the instructor's hands to film the action he is performing. As you can see, our top cover is very thin. Now the instructor moves to the base of the lamp. This is our base of the lamp. The camera tries to face perpendicularly to the torso of the instructor. The base is thicker than the top cover because we don't want light to go through the base. The instructor wants to show this socket to the audience. This is our socket. He can raise his hand to transition to an instructor shot, which focuses on his face and the object he is presenting. We bought it from the hardware store. At this point, the instructor wants to highlight to the learner a light bulb he is going to use. Let's take a look at this light bulb. He can point to the light bulb to have the robot capture an object shot. Let's take a closer look. He can further use speech to make the robot increase the zoom level. The light bulb has yellow fume. The instructor can also use speech to suggest changing camera angle. And now let's look from the top. The camera responds by transitioning from a standard angle shot to a high angle shot. Let's start installing the ball. Done. For implementation, we used standard Kinect RGBD post tracking to locate the regions of interest, such as hands and head positions. The, we used a vision based hand tracker plus a custom machine learning model to find pointing gestures. Finally, we performed field shot classification with a large language model to identify sentences that suggest camera angle and zoom level changes. We solve camera pass planning as an optimization problem. At a high level, our method calculates how much a possible next camera position violates a set of criteria with a cost value j. The optimal next camera position xt plus 1 will be the one that violates these criteria as little as possible and thus has the smallest j. We performed a user study with six instructors. Each of them made a 4 to 7 minutes tutorial video on a distinct topic using Stargazer. With some training, all of them were able to make the videos with one or two takes. Please see our supplemental materials, which is available on ACM Digital Library and the project website, for videos produced by our participants. I think there is much interesting work lying ahead of this line of research. Starcruiser currently looks at a carefully selected set of instructor signals. We are interested in expanding the range of signals that our robot can understand, especially those that are implicit in speech or actions but can be inferred with some level of social intelligence. 
Right now is a particularly good time to do this kind of research because of the recent progress in large language and vision language models. We are also interested in going beyond videos. Work at this year's Kai already looks at capturing objects from multiple angles in video calls. The mobility and precision of robots can potentially make it easier, and possibly facilitate 3D captures of objects and actions using techniques such as neural radiance fields. Finally, we would also like to explore fitting robot cinematography better into content creators' existing workflows, for example, adapting to individual creators' styles. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Please see our paper and our project website for more details. A QR code for the project website on the right side of this slide.